look, if anybody was ever going to say that the new Zelda game disproves the existence of God, it was bound to be me anyway, right? I mean, I told myself not to do a Zelda-related diatribe. I was making references to it for weeks leading up to this release. I, I took a week off of the show to play it. I've been standing for it constantly for years. And I know a lot of you have to be sick and fucking tired to hear about this video game. But it's also the only thing that I've been doing for the last 12 days. So it kind of would be hard for me to look elsewhere for diatribe inspiration. Plus, it actually does kind of disprove the existence of God. I'll get there. So... And for those of you who aren't gamers, I need to explain that the new Legend of Zelda is what's called an open world game. And what that means is that you don't exactly progress from level one to level two to level three along some set path. Instead, you're given a huge open world to explore that's filled with different challenges and goals. And it's more or less up to you to decide what order to undertake them in. So what, one of the big draws of the game is exploration, right? Like, I mean, you've got a princess that you're supposed to rescue and a kingdom you're supposed to save and all that, but you can also spend a ton of time just wandering around in the woods looking for puzzles and power-ups. And what makes this game and its predecessor so fucking good is that their world is so fun to explore. See, open world gaming is all the rage in the industry right now. Every major AAA release is an open world game now, it seems, and not always to their benefit. Yeah, there's also this fucking arms race in terms of the size of the world, which means that every new game has to have a bigger world than the last. And what that means in practice is that a lot of games end up with these huge worlds with nothing in them. That makes traversing them less like exploration and more like tedium. But in Tears of the Kingdom, the, the new Zelda game, the world is infinitely rewarding to explore. If you think to yourself, I kind of want to climb all the way to the very top of that mountain, you'll invariably find something at the top of that mountain that made the climb worth it. Right. If you think I want to follow this huge valley all the way to the end of it, you're going to find something at the end of it that makes it worth that trek. The coolness of the location is going to be directly proportional to how difficult it was to get there. Now, compare that to the real world. Right. Like, sure, the, the view from the top of the mountain is great, but it's not substantially better than the view from 75 percent up the mountain. Right. And airplanes have even better views. And you don't have to get all sweaty and risk hypothermia to get to them. When you were a kid, the urge to explore the world around you was way more likely to end with a tetanus shot than a worthwhile discovery. So, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, the guy who created the original Legend of Zelda back in 1986, he said that his inspiration for the game was trying to recreate the joy of exploring a field when he was a kid. Now, he was a kid in Kyoto, a, a place where exploring a field might actually turn up some centuries-old ruins or something, but you were never going to burn just the right bush to discover a secret stairway that was filled with free money. In other words, the instant that we as a species gained the ability to craft our own worlds, we were making better ones than this. And that's going to sting if you're religious, doesn't it? I mean, granted, God only had seven days for his project and the folks working on Tears of the Kingdom took six fucking years. But I feel like being all knowing and all powerful should probably balance that out, no? And yet the seeds of our doubt, the, the one loose thread that unraveled God belief for most of the people listening to this show is just what a shit job the world did in terms of planning. What's at the top of the mountain? Blisters. Right? What's, what's at the end of that canyon? More fucking canyon. In the mystical land of Hyrule, if I help out a stranger, I'm going to get rewarded for it. Right? I'll find your goats and you'll give me 100 rupees and some Hylian pine cones or whatever. In the real world, I help out a stranger. They're going to ask for another fucking favor. Right? I, I, and I know that religious apologists will tell me, well, that you know God is trying to teach me a far more complex lesson than the people at Nintendo are trying to teach me with Zelda. But when you try to pin them down on what the fuck that lesson is, you'll quickly learn that it's a lesson too complex for you to understand, which means it's a waste of fucking time trying to teach it to you. Right? See, the, the thing is, is that video games give us a ready example of what a designed world looks like. In a designed world, there's always a reason to have gone to the place that you go. When you encounter a problem, there's always a solution, and the materials you need to solve it are somewhere nearby. There's a logical reward system. The reward for the journey is commensurate with its difficulty. So either... Christians have to accept that their God didn't design the world or that he's worse at it than the folks at Nintendo. Either way, it seems like a pretty damning admission for religion.